Nasiyo mara moja Kwa roho na kwa kweli Bali sija pata Majibu yangu kuyaona Oh nimeomba Tena siyo mara moja Kwa roho na Na bali sija pata Majibu yangu kuyaona Adui shetani muongo Asema ya kwa mamwenyezi mungu Yee anijali bali Siwezi Sito mkubali Ninayo hakikisho Asubu itafika nani Jali, anani Jali, sito kubali Kuzama kwenye maji Anani, benda Yeye ni mwema Jali sitoku bali kuzama kwenye maji anani benda yeye ni mwema Adui shetani muongo Asema ya kwamba mwenyezi mungu ye anijali bali Siwezi sito mkubali Ninayo hakikisho asubu itafika nani Jali anani jali sito kubali Kuzama kwenye maji Anani Benda Yeye ni Mwema Yeye Anani Jali Anani Jali Sito kubali Kuzama kwenye maji Anani benda Yeye ni mwema Yeye 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 Praise the Lord and good evening uh, this is another wonderful Tuesday that we come together. This is Gospel Centers International, the Central Church. I want to welcome you to our Tuesday prayers. And uh, we are going in the next uh, about 45 minutes, uh, we are going to be enjoying ourselves in the presence of God. Uh, thank you, uh, praise and worship team. They always do a good, a good job for us. They give us you know, some of those soft voices and uh, give us an environment that we may be able to praise our God. God bless you so much, praise and worship, and uh, uh, the team Edge, you're doing well. Now, if you are uh, watching us through Facebook, please like our page, that you get to know what it is that we bring from time to time. YouTube, please subscribe, and uh, comment also. We want to know that you're there, in Jesus' name. Now, if you have a testimony, if you have a testimony, please call to the church office, register your testimony. We shall be reading some of those testimonies. We have read in the past, and especially in our, uh, in our, our prayer service that is coming. Uh, you know, we have our prayer service coming this Friday, 30th April. We shall be reading some of them. So if you have a testimony, please, you know, brief it, uh, make it brief. Send it to the email of the church uh, or call the church and uh, tell them. 
and we are going to be reading some of it in our prayer service. Remember, it shall be virtual. We shall be sharing the link uh, so that you can connect, and you can connect uh, from wherever you are, and God bless you so much. Now, our services remain the same. That is on Sunday. First service is 7.15, second service 9.30 a.m., and uh, that service 11.45. Please connect to any of our services. And by the way, all the services are unique. We have different messages uh, coming, different worship. Uh, in other words, you know, it, it, it's different. It's not one thing. Uh, it's different for all of us and uh, uh, for all the services and it's a great blessing. If you have your offering and you do not want to wait for Sunday, please give it through our PBN number 844632 and God shall surely bless you. Now, on Wednesday, we have these programs that we have begun of Zoom growth centers. Oh, it is exciting. It is exciting. It is exciting. Last Wednesday we had it and a few other Wednesdays that have passed. God has been gracious. Tomorrow, please connect with us with our growth centers and make sure there is no one who is a member of this church that is not connected. Not necessarily because you are booked as a member, but you are an, attend an attendee of our church. Make sure that you have uh, uh, that Zoom link. Connect with us and uh, we have tremendous time in the presence of God. God is going to bless you so much. We want to pray and uh, prepare ourselves. And uh, in the next 40 or so minutes, we shall be inquiring of the let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for this wonderful time that you've given us. Lord, we bear testimonies of your faithfulness in the last season. Lord, there are some of us that have prayed together with us during a Tuesday prayer. And there are miracles to show for it. There are also things that are uh, cross-cutting that are church-oriented for our ministries, for the God, for our counties, that we prayed for. And Lord, they have come to pass. We give all praise and glory unto you. And therefore, Lord, as we begin our prayer this evening, we invite your presence, just like you have been in the past. Be with us this week, this season, this Tuesday, in the name of Jesus. And do your will, O God. Let it be, Father God, that whatever you've intended, whatever you have loved to do, shall be be done to the people of God. Lord, I want to pray that you should permit into our offices, into our cars, Lord, into our homes, wherever we are found tonight, I pray that it shall permeate in the name of Jesus. And even for the one that shall watch a day later, I pray that even for them, they shall encourage Counter our Christ, our Savior, our healer, our redeemer in the name of Jesus Christ. And our lives are not going to remain the same. Lord, as we engage with you, may you answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you still know someone who needs to benefit from this prayer, please call them before we begin. They are not late. Uh, your growth center, your county, make sure that they are coming in. Now, I want to encourage you. Uh, from some few verses found in Acts chapter 19, uh, verses 1 to 7. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. And this is what the Bible says. And it happened in the time of Apollos, uh, that in the time Apollos was at Corinth, Paul was passing through the higher parts of Ephesus and, fighting, and finding certain disciples, he said to them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said to him, we did not so much as hear whether the Holy Spirit is. In other words, or there be a Holy Spirit that exists. Verse 3 says, and he said to them, then to what were you baptized? And they say to John's baptism. And Paul said, John truly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe into him coming after him, uh, in, into him coming after him. In other words, into the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, I mean, into Jesus coming after after John, and that is into Jesus Christ. And into Jesus Christ. And hearing they were baptizing, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about to have. Hallelujah. Now, this is a story about Paul going to some of the churches that he had helped plant. And therefore, he goes to a certain place called Ephesus. And one of the regions... You know, we could say maybe he is in Islands and he goes to one of the places in Islands, you know, to a certain church. And he asked them, so when you believed, were you baptized in the Holy Spirit? You know, or, or, 
since you believed, well, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, we have not heard as much. And he asked them, then what doctrine were you inducted into? And they said, we were, you know, we were baptizing, uh, baptized into John's baptism. And, uh, you know, he understood what they were saying. Remember, John was a contemporary, or he lived together in the times of Jesus. In fact, John was a cousin of Jesus. And therefore, John was a forerunner. John was a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And being a forerunner, there are some few things that he did almost exactly at Jesus. But at one time, you know, John himself said, I am not the one. There comes another one after me who shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And indeed, he was talking about Jesus then. So therefore, when Paul preaches the gospel to them, he actually now baptizes them, you know, truly and I mean truthfully into the baptism of Christ, which is into the water in the name, using the name of Jesus Christ. And immediately after that, while he is laying hands on them, they receive the Holy Spirit. Now, my friend, you know, it is possible that you may have come from a background like most of us have come from. You know, a background of traditions, you know, where we hold our customs dear. I suppose that these guys in Ephesus were hearing what was happening in Jerusalem and they so desired to associate themselves or to be associated with what was happening. And therefore, the kind of gospel they received was one that John baptized his disciples and therefore they were baptized, you know, in, uh, they were baptized into John's baptism. But there is a baptism that is of the Lord Jesus Christ, where you confess him as Lord and Savior. And thereafter, you can receive the Holy Spirit. Now, my encouragement tonight is to tell you it is not enough for you to be baptized in water. To be baptized in water. If it was, then even that very night or that very evening, whatever time this man, Paul, had visited them, that very time that he had visited them, they could have just received that baptism of water and it could be, you know, could have been done. But, you know, the Bible says that as he laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came down upon them and they received the Holy Spirit and they spoke in new tongues and prophesied. Now, I want to tell you, if you have not received the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, whether you are a young person or an old person, don't say that our religion, our denomination, or our customs, or our traditions, because this is the scriptures. If there be a tradition, the only tradition there is, is the tradition of the scriptures. Paul who is actually the one that peace sets, in other words, who, who shows us the way, you know, asks this church, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they say, they were very sincere. We have never even heard that there is anything like that that is called the Holy Spirit. And therefore, he baptized them, baptized them again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately after that, he laid hands upon them. In fact, just by laying hands upon them, they received the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, with evidence, and they spoke in tongues, and they prophesied. Now, two things that you, want, uh, you need to know as you continue. It is not enough for you to be baptized with water. You can tell your friend there. You can tell your husband. You can tell your wife. You can tell your children. Or your children can tell you. It is not enough for you to be baptized with water. Remember, we talk about baptism. Uh, baptism and baptism always, you know, baptism in water always follows you know, salvation. You can't be baptized even if you are immersed and you are not born again. That, that is swimming. What you did, you just got wet then. But you need to be baptized in water immediately after you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But that is not enough. You need to receive the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized in, in, in the Holy Spirit. And number two, baptism in the Holy Spirit makes our well, you know, our walk in Christ very easy. I want to read uh, Acts chapter 1 and verses 8. 
And the Bible here says, but you shall receive power. Now, this is talking about when the Holy Spirit comes. No, the one that we're talking about, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that you never had the Holy Spirit. When you got born again, there was a deposit of the Holy Spirit. But this is another, you know, is another dimension of the Holy Spirit where he overflows you, he covers you, he clothes you. In other words, you are now embodied. You are now embodied or you are now clothed. The gown around you becomes the Holy Spirit. The Bible here says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, not in you, upon you, upon you or around you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The reason, as I said sometimes earlier, we are not able to witness is because the passion of the Holy Spirit shall not, has not come upon our lives. My brother, what you have been lacking is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit so that it shall be effective for ministry, so that it shall be effective in all the things that you do for God. Two things, it is not enough for you to be baptized in water. Yes, it must. It is not enough. You need baptism of the Holy Spirit where you become swallowed up. You become submerged in Christ through the Holy Spirit. And there he shall now use you as a vessel, wherever you shall, you shall be found. You know, this same scripture says, they were together gathered in the upper room, and when the Holy Spirit comes, some tongues could be, you know, uh, something like tongues could be seen on their heads, and from that, that immediate time, when they began speaking in tongues, Peter went outside, and he began preaching this gospel, and many people got born again. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. He empowers us. You need him in Jesus' name. God bless you so much. Think about that. And if you have not received, please, you can indicate there and say, I desire to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We, uh, it is not impossible for us to connect with you on Zoom. And we shall pray for you and you shall receive. Please indicate it uh, even in our chat. And um, the media team is going to pick it. God bless you so much. We want to pray now. Uh, let me just highlight uh, what we are going to pray for. We are going to pray for consecration and preparation. We are talking about consecration, preparation, and separation. This is all engulfing. We are talking about uh, uh, confessing our sin, but not uh, that is not enough, but also separating ourselves. In, in other words, consecrating ourselves for the work that is going to come. Number two, we are going to pray for family. Uh, we are going to take some time to be praying for families. You know, children have been against their parents. There are murders reported of children killing their parents. There has been abuse in the family circles. There has been murder, suicide. We are going to pray for the family on that line. We are also going to pray for the church in Kenya. We want to pray for revival in the sound doctrine. You know, in the sound doctrine, not things that we, uh, we, we not the flair and, uh, and, and uh, prosperity as, uh, as uh, while prosperity is important, not those things. We want to pray for the revival in doctrine, in fellowship, in passion, and in teaching. We want to pray that the church shall go back to the place it needs to be. It's still Ramadan number four. We are going to pray against bloodshed and extremism. Uh, we hear a bit of this here and there, and uh, even if not in Kenya, in different places. We want to pray for the revelation of Christ. And then lastly, we are going to be praying for the Kenyan leaders, and we are going to pray for selflessness, uh, faithfulness, and unity in Jesus' name. Now, pray number one. Uh, Acts chapter 13 and verses one. The Bible says, now Barnabas, Simeon called Nigar, Luc Lucius from Cyrene, Manain, who grew up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul were prophets and teachers in the church of Ant at Antioch. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set Barnabas and sell apart for me to do the work for which I called them. And verses 3, then they fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them and let them go. Verse 2 again, it says, set Barnabas and Saul apart. You know, in some other versions, consecrate for me Barnabas and Saul. For me, for, to do the work which I have called them. Then Joshua chapter 3, Josh, Joshua chapter 3, uh, verses 5 says, Then Joshua addressed the people and he said, consecrate yourselves because tomorrow the Lord will, uh, will do marvelous things among you. 
And uh, I want to read from Leviticus chapter 20, Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 7, Leviticus 27 it says, uh, 20 verse 7, Therefore separate yourselves um, and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. And verses 8 says, keep my statutes and observe them. I am the Lord who has set you apart. Now we, we have come to a certain place as Gospel Centers International, where we need now to be sanctified, to be separated, to be prepared for a great world. Remember, this is our 30th year in ministry. And if you check, uh, if you check in Numbers chapter 4, it talks about, you know, uh, putting aside men or uh, young men of 30 years old, uh, who are 30 years old and uh, up to 50 years. And they are supposed to be set apart for service. Now, we want to go to service, but we must be consecrated, in other words, and prepared in every way, uh, either by training, by capacity building, in whichever way we must be separated. And you separate when you know the role which those people will be, just like Barnabas and Saul were set apart for a certain work that God was calling them for. I want us to pray. I pray that we shall be consecrated and prepared, and we shall be separated, first of all, from sin, and from many, many things that come to men, so that we, you know, we can accomplish as a ministry, as a church, what God has desired. Lift up your voice in your house. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the example that you have drawn to us, O oh God, of Saul and Barnabas. And Master, Lord, I want to thank you, God, because this is our season as Gospel Centers International. You are taking us to the next level, O oh God. And Master, you have been clear in the summit of God that you have separated and consecrated in our midst. I pray, my God, as the congregants, Lord, as the members of this ministry, we shall be able to hear your voice even as instructed and directed by your servant in the name of Jesus Christ that we shall hear the voice of Joshua speaking, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ and to the Israelites, he told them, consecrate yourself for th tomorrow the Lord shall do mighty things. I want to pray that we shall be separated, that we shall be consecrated, that we shall be prepared in every way. I want to pray, oh God, for divine opportunities in our workplaces, that we shall be supervisors of one, of two, of ten, of twenty, of hundreds, of thousands in the name of Jesus Christ. Master, you shall capacity build in us, oh God. You shall help us to make decisions in our workplaces, master in our families, and therefore prepare us, O oh God, even for the work that is coming ahead of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you shall train us, O oh God, master, even as we go for trainings in our workplaces, as we go for trainings, O oh God, within GCI ministries, Lord, as we connect one with another, we shall learn things, O oh God, as we read the Bible. Master, there shall be capacity building in our hearts and in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray, Master, even for members that have never thought, oh God, of ministering in the presence of God, you shall begin to entrust them, oh God, as they read your word, as they pray, my God, as they continue, oh God, in their life. Master, you shall begin to vividly talk to them in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you, God, for those that you shall prompt to come, oh God, even to our program, oh God, in, with Park in the name of Jesus Christ. Others, oh God, to go to Bible school. Others, oh God, to enroll to schools of ministry. Others, that's all, Father God, to be, Father God, to be, to humble themselves, to become mentees in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you shall prepare us, O God, consecrate us in the name of Jesus Christ, separate us, O God, from the rigors of this world, Master, from the busy schedules, O God, that are happening. I pray, my God, that you shall help us to become counselors, to become writers of books, Master, to become Lord, even writers of songs in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that your grace, O oh God, shall be bound in the name of Jesus Christ and that you shall minister to us, O God, in a supernatural way. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you praise and adoration. We declare that you are God and you are King. And for the God, you are doing mighty things. Consecrate us, O God, as a church. Consecrate GCI, O God, in this nation. Put us aside, O Father God, but help us, O God, that in all integrity, in all excellence, we shall execute our mandate. We shall be impactful, O God. We shall be 
influential in the name of Jesus. We shall be peace setters, oh God. Master, we shall bring back, oh God, the gospel, oh God, even in its totality, without compromise in the name of Jesus. Give us grace in evangelism, in church planting, oh God. We honor you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, we want to pray for family. Now, the family, uh, the family unit has been tested in the last, uh, maybe about one year, uh, from March last year, as countries went into lockdown. This is not only happening in Kenya, uh, but we want to pray for Kenya. You know, this is happening to our members. It is happening to our relatives and friends. It is happening to people we know. They, there is just a great thing that is happening. You know, the news that we are carrying every evening, much of it is about what is happening in the families. Now, children have a reason against their parents. Can you imagine, you know, a child, a grad child going back to the grandmother and, you know, slaughtering the grandmother and taking the head and taking it to the police. Another one, you know, yesterday, uh, not just uh, uh, last, last week, uh, said, you know, fast track. Last week, uh, there's one that said, fast track my, my, you know, my prosecution. In other words, he's admitted he's guilty. He does not even want the process to go. He says, convict me first so that I can start. In, it has come to that level. We want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ against these vices, against abuse in the family circle. You know, just fights against uh, between father, mother, even their children. We want to pray against these vices. We, are want, we want to pray against suicide. For those that cannot be able to face another one. They are committing suicide in numbers, in tens, different places. Some of them may not even be declared. Why? Because of the pressure that has come. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. This is just the right thing to do. There is, you can't talk about anything else. Children, I mean children, and you can hear me at home. Please obey your parents. The, that's what the Bible says. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. And it puts into bracket, this is a very important commandment with a promise. Or actually, it is the only commandment that has a promise in it. All the other commandments is must do. This one, there is a blessing if you do. Number three, six, three of Ephesians says, so that it may go well with you. And that you may have a long life on the earth. I want our lives to go well. And therefore, if you are a teenager, or you are a youth, or even if you are old, you know, for it to go well with you, then honor your father and your mother. We want to honor them. We want to honor them. It doesn't matter what is happening in their life. They may be drunks. They may be polygamous, and we don't like that. But we must just honor them. We do not agree with them. But we must just honor them so that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life. By the way, long life is connected to honoring them. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up, tra uh, up by training and instructing them about the Lord. Why don't you lift up your voice? We are praying for family. But remember, family is you. You are family. So pray for yourself, but also pray for the church, GCI, and others that God may just grant us grace with parents and that uh, these vices of murder and suicide shall be defeated. Lift up your voice. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come before you tonight. Lord, we want to thank you for the grace that you give to men. You have said that we honor our fathers and our mothers, O oh God, because this is a very important commandment that the only one that has a promise with it, O oh God, I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you shall help us, O oh God. Master, you shall grace us, O oh God. Master, you shall cause your word to dwell richly in our hearts, O oh God, that we may not forget what it is that we require to do in the name of Jesus. We are praying together with those that are at home. We are praying to God together with my brother and sister. They have been affected directly because of a suicide at home, because of a murder case, because of abuses to their brothers and sisters, even some of oh God to their very own parents. Lord, I want to pray for love to cover for the God that multitude of sin. We bind the spirit of oppression. We bind the spirit of depression that is bringing about suicide. 
We reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. Even for them that have had difficulties and are listening to me tonight, I want to pray for reconciliation. I pray for the God that shall bring them back together in the name of Jesus Christ. Even for that husband that went back home, that went back, oh God, and took her. And Father God took another, another household. Lord, I pray that they shall come back, oh God, even to their love of life in the name of Jesus Christ. We reject all workings of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. We paralyze those networks of Satan in the name of Jesus. We declare that Satan is a defeated foe. But you, our God, are exalted and highly lifted up. We secure the family shackles, oh God, by the blood of Jesus Christ. That the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus Christ speaks concerning us better things than the blood of Abel. Yes, the blood of El Abel does speak, but the blood of Jesus Christ speaketh better things. I pray, oh God, that the blood of Jesus shall speak on behalf of these families. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are breaking the covenants of drug addiction. We are Father God, breaking, oh God, the covenant of, of alcoholism and its vices, immorality in those families, oh God, perversion of every way. Master, I bind those spirits in the name of Jesus. We pray for the teenagers, the young men, the young women, oh God. We reject perversion, oh God, fornication and immorality. We declare shall be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as your servant, I lose the power of God. Yes, upon their lives in the name of Jesus. We declare deliverance, deliverance deliverance, oh God, from those evil vices in the name of Jesus Christ. Master, we shall not be defined by, Father God, by the by the world as it is. We shall not conform to the traditions of men, but rather, oh God, we shall conform to the word of God that is life-giving in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we shall take care of our families in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for fathers that we shall help them, oh God, master, to steer their children and their, and their families who so go into the right direction. We honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, I want us to pray for the church in Kenya. Hallelujah. And uh, our concentration in the last many days has been about, you know, revelation. They are very good. They are very good. I also seek for them. Uh, but, but there is a way we are living the, the, the doctrines, uh, you know, of the gospel. The, the right doctrines of the gospel. You know, talking about Jesus Christ and the work that he did on Calvary. You know, Jesus Christ and his salvation, the salvation that he brought to us. You know, about the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, talking about... Uh, I talk I'm talking about righteousness and purity, you know, and fellowship, things like that. We want to pray for the Church of Kenya, revival of the right doctrine. We want to pray for fellowship, passion, and teaching. Just listen to one that that kind of a church. Acts chapter two and verses forty-two. This is the model, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that, were, uh, that believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continu and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, in other words, gross centers, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. In other words, as they continued daily with one accord in the temple and broke bread from house to house, as they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, in other words, in unity, praising God and having favor with all people, the Lord added to the church daily. One of the ways that the church shall be added is fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. It is fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. Because you cannot fellowship if you do not have singleness of heart. It is one of the requirements for the church to grow. We want to pray for revival of the right doctrine. We want to pray for fellowship and passion and teachings one among the other. Why don't you lift up your voice in your house or in your workplace? Let's no, let, let's, let's talk to God to help the church in Kenya. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we acknowledge what you gave us, O God, in Christ. Master, you died on the cross, but it says, O God, that you resurrected. But before you went up, you descended, O God, into the underworld where you took 
the keys. And you who descended are also the same that ascended. And master, you gave gifts to men. And master, you also presented the church before our God. Master, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you because you presented a perfect church. Even for God, Father God, the church that you desire. I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that church that you died for. Master shall continue in the doctrine, O oh God, in the right doctrine in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, my God, that you shall visit us in our homes. That, Father God, we shall not relegate, O oh God, that work, Master, even to it into denominations, O oh God. Master, we shall not only be saying that this denomination is good at that and the other denomination are good at that. Lord, I want to pray that we shall be all rounded because you gave to uh, gifts to men, O oh God. Some are administrators, others as in help, O oh God. But unto us all you gave the Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that there shall be there shall be revival in whichever way you shall do it. We pray for the Catholic Church, the Master, they shall meet with God in the name of Jesus Christ. And Master, there shall be a breaking. There shall be a breaking of every barrier in the name of Jesus. Every impediment. We pray, O oh God, that fathers and priests shall receive, O oh God, the person of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the Anglicans in the name of Jesus. We pray for the Methodists, Methodists O oh God, Master the Salvation Abbey. We pray for the Quakers, O oh God, that they may experience you, O oh God. We pray, Father God, for the PCEAs and the AICs, O oh God. We pray, Father God, for the full Gospels. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father that God for the assemblies of God. We are praying for the redeemed church of, of, of God. Lord, we want to commend them into your hands. We pray for deliverance church. We pray for the God for word of faith in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the God for Sita and many other denominations. Lord, I pray that we shall come back, oh God, to the place where we begin to love the person of the Holy Spirit. You shall cause us, oh God, in our cocoons, oh God, master in our seclusions, oh God, in our silos, that we shall meet with the person of the Holy Spirit and we shall all be knitted together. Oh God, we love in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, my God, that we shall begin for the God to, uh, for the God to cross cut, that for the, our ministry shall not only be to ourselves and for the God to those that are, that are of our denominations, but for the God to the church and to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we destroy and we demolish barriers that are in, erected by men in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that we shall reach out to men and so shall men reach out to us, O oh God, for the cause of the true gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the grace of God be manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the love of God be seen by men in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the church in Kenya. Give us unity, O oh God. Master, knit us together with cause of love. Lord, raise men and and says, so God, they shall cross cut. They shall not be a love only for their congregation, but for the God, they shall be love beyond their congregations and their denominations in the name of Jesus. They shall become a blessing to God, a blessing to the body of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We honor you, Jesus. We give you praise, O God. We say you're wonderful and these things you're doing, oh God, because you have loved the church. You are preparing the church for yourself. For indeed you are the groom and we are the bride that you have been waiting for. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, oh God, to be knitted together as one. Well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give you praise and I give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue to uh, pray for the church of Christ. Now, I want us to pray against bloodshed and extremism. And uh, this usually happens in this month uh, as, uh, you know, our friends Muslims are doing their Ramadan. You know, there are some of them that interpret that this is the holiest month. And therefore, you find bloodshed and, and extremism. It may not be happening uh, with us, but it happens across the world. You hear it here and there and in those places. The Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter 4, a very relevant verse, a very relevant verse. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 3. 2 Corinthians 4, 3. The Bible says, but if our gospel be hid, 
it is hid to them that are lost. I will repeat that again. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves uh, for your sakes, uh, for, for Jesus' sake. Verse 6 says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, Colossians chapter 2 and verses 8. Colossians chapter 2 and verses 8. Beware lest any man spoil you with, you know, through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. I can tell you for sure that most of the religions that we have in the world, they have just very good traditions, nothing else. Very good traditions, nothing else. And therefore, those are cultures that people do not want to part with. But it is not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, that is verses 9, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now, we want to pray, and because God reveals himself to men, just like he revealed himself to you, and many others, including myself, that God shall reveal himself to those, our brothers, and especially this season of fasting, of a prayer, of, of Ramadan. We want to pray for intervention. Lift up your voice in whichever way Pray, pray, pray to God in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you, God, for your word. Your word says, oh God, Master, that you gave us authority to trample over scorpions and snakes and over all the powers of the evil one. And you say, it shall by no means hurt us. We want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ that Father God, even as our friends, as our brothers and sisters, Master, our fasting, seeking a God. Lord, I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, just like in Ephesus. Master, uh, Father God, there was an inscription, Master, to an unknown God. I want to pray that they shall find this God they have been seeking for and not knowing who he is. I pray for the revelation of Christ. I pray for a revelation of Christ. I pray for a revelation of Christ. A revelation of Christ, oh God. Yes, oh God, in their enclaves, in the name of Jesus Christ, in their houses. Let the light of the, of the gospel shine. Master, where they are sitting, waiting, oh God, to, to break their first. I pray, my God, that they, on their TVs, they shall see a message that shall captivate their heart, oh God, even as it's being dispensed. Master, when they are in their rooms and they go to you YouTube and they go to Facebook, they shall find a certain preacher preaching the gospel of Christ, of how Jesus Christ died and resurrected from man. And they shall be convicted and they shall begin to search in the name of Jesus Christ. Master, they shall get a ringtone. Master, even when they call a certain friend and they shall begin, oh God, to, to, to think, oh God, Master, about the words of the gospel that are in the ringtone. Master, in different ways, you shall cause men to engage with them. Lord, wherever they shall be found in the mighty name of Jesus. Revelation of Christ is what we pray for, oh God, for this community. We bind that spirit of stubbornness. We bind the spirit of stubbornness. We declare the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary. Master is speaking on your behalf, is speaking on their behalf, is rescuing them, oh God, from every manner of bondage. Because the Bible says, if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them, Father God, that are being lost. But Master, you have revealed yourself unto us, O God, by your Holy Spirit. I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, Father God, there shall be, there shall be, O God, even the knowledge of our Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall be the knowledge of our Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Revelation of Christ. We want to bind the spirit of extremism. We bind the spirit of terrorism. We bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare peace that surpasses human understanding. For the God, evil men shall be exposed before God they execute what they desire to execute. Indeed, they themselves shall be executed and they shall not achieve anything in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray my God that you shall speak to them, O oh God, in diverse ways in the name of Jesus Christ. They shall get pamphlets. They shall read it in the newspapers. They 
shall get Bibles, oh God, in whichever way. They shall get the message of Christ online. They shall get it, oh God, in their houses, in their boxes, in places that they work, in places that they go to. They shall experience Christ. Let this year be a year of experience, Lord, for the for the God, for the Muslims in the name of Jesus, that they may come to the knowledge of Christ. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Now we want to do the last prayer point, And I want us to pray for the Kenyan leaders. Um, we have prayed against many vices. But I want us to pray for selflessness. And we want to pray for faithfulness. And by the way, we, we, we prayed last week about some of these things again. We want to pray for selflessness. We want to pray for faithfulness. We want to pray for unity. We want to pray for integrity and justice. These are the things lacking in our community, in our society, from our leadership. Ezekiel chapter 22 and, and verses 27. Ezekiel 22 and verses 27. It talks about what is happening and what your role is. What is happening and what your role is. Now the Bible says in 22, 27, it says, Her princes within her are like wolves. Yes, princess talks about the political offices. So the political uh, leaders within her are like wolves tearing their prey apart. They shed blood, destroying souls and make unjust gain. You know, COVID millionaires and others. It continues to say, her prophets whitewashed all these things through false visions and lying divinations. They kept on saying, this is what the Lord God says when the Lord has not spoken to us. We are also indicted because the second line talks about the church and the ministers. So the ministers, the, the, the preachers, the prophets, the apostles are like whitewashed. You know, they are whitewashed. All these things, I know, they have a whitewash. In other words, whatever is wrong of the princes of the political office is, is, is you know, sanctified. Uh, we can use the word sanctified or it's, it's covered. Uh, by them, by lying divinations. Verse 21 and 29 says, The people of the land were vigorously oppressive, oppressive and took possession of plunder by violence. They have afflicted the poor and the needy and unjustly treated the foreigner. Now, Ezekiel twenty-two thirty 30 is a scripture you know. It says, I sought for a man among them to build the wall and stand in the breach in my presence on behalf of the land, so that it will, it will not be destroyed. But I found none. So I poured my indignation over them with my fierce anger. I have consumed them. I brought the consequences of their behavior upon them, declares the Lord God. You know, that is very indicting. But I want to tell us that this, we are forewarned by these words, that the political environment and the people there are corrupt, they are like ropes, they are tearing us apart, and we as ministers have a white watch. In other words, we have overlooked their evil because there is a gain for us. But the Bible says, can I find a distinct person who can stand in the gap and build up a wall that I may not have to overrun this nation. I want you to be that person tonight. Let's build and join our faith together. We want to pray that God shall not judge our nation. He shall not judge our nation, but he shall give us a second chance. Lift up your voice with your children. You can even kneel down in your house. Let's pray to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, O God, in humility. You said, if my people that I are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and repent of their wicked ways, then I would hear from heaven and heal their land. Lord, this is our desire and it's our prayer tonight that you shall sanctify this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to stand in the gap on behalf of our political offices and lords, even the ministers in our ministry. For the God, they are, it is true. And for the God, because of their gain, because of the money that they receive from them, they have corrupted the word of God. I want to pray that you should forgive us, O oh God, as the church for judgment is starting and it is starting in the house of God. I pray, my God, that you shall remember, my O oh God, even in the times of wrath. Lord, we pray 
well in advance, that you may sanctify us, that you may forgive us, O God, that you may turn around, O God, our captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the help of our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant-keeping God. Master, you said if your people would humble themselves and master even repent and turn away from their wicked ways, you would hear from heaven and master and come and heal their land. We are praying in the name of Jesus. May you heal us in the name of Jesus. May you hear us, O God, in our day of trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we want to bind the spirit of selfishness, O God, that causes corruption. In the name of Jesus Christ, that spirit of unfaithfulness, that master, we cannot never be tasked with anything without thinking of our, ourselves. Therefore, the Bible calls us wolves. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, Father God, you shall redeem your people unto yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Every infrastructure of wickedness. We destroy, we demolish it in the name of Jesus. Whether in the church, in our family circles, we demolish it in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the help of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your hand of grace be upon your people, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, my God, that we shall help our nation. We pray for the political leaders. We pray for our president, his deputy. We pray, my God, those that, for those that are around him. Master, we want to declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the spirit of Athalia shall not continue to reign in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of Athalia in the mighty name of Jesus, just like Jezebel. Lord, just like Jezebel. For the God, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that uh, that Athalia's spirit shall not reign or rule in this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bind it, we paralyze it, we defeat it in the name of Jesus. We declare it is under our feet and our God is on the throne. We give you honor, Jesus, and we give you praise. Lord, we cover ourselves with the precious blood. We declare that Kenya is blessed to the north, to the south, to the east and to the west. We declare that the peace of a God that transcends human understanding, Lord God now is reigning in our nation. We give you honor and we give you praise. You are a good God and there is no one like unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you very much for taking time to be with us this wonderful evening. May the Lord God bless you so much. Have a lovely evening and a good night. And please make sure that you connect with us tomorrow for the Bible, uh, for the, for the, uh, for the growth centers and on that for Berean Bible study. Shalom and good night. Hello viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's our prayer that you have been nourished and edified. Remember, this service is not complete without giving. To do so, use M-Peso Pay Bill number 844632, account number, offering, or type, or shipfold redemption, or any other. You can also use our Equity Bank account number 10802968495538, account name, Nairobi Gospel Center International. In need of prayers, counseling, or inquiries, reach out to us on 0725-255-941 or 0734-662-577. May our good Lord richly bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you, now and forevermore.